Hey guys, how you doing? This is Dan from The New Travel. Uh, a few weeks ago, I made a video, my first ever kind of camera review video, review and test, and it was pretty popular. It's about the camcorder that you're watching on right now. It's got thousands of views. It's actually one of my most watched videos. And because of that video, I decided that I would make another review video, this time about my favorite, my favorite, favorite, favorite vlogging camera ever, the Canon G7X Mark II. I mean, there's so many good things about this camera. There's the fact that it can comfortably fit inside your pocket, which uh, you definitely can't say about DLSRs, and you definitely can't say about many cameras these days other than camera phones. So the fact that you have a very high quality uh, camera with a 17 times zoom, it's just really, really a useful vlogging tool. Of course, you can flip this around like that and you can go selfie mode and see yourself as you're filming very useful tool in fact I'll show you right now as see how it's right side up and then as soon as I move it back it switches to upside down Do you, can you see that switch properly whoop, whoop. that's so when you're looking at it like this you can properly see the screen and then as soon as you switch modes, it's right side up again. Of course, this feature is very useful for vloggers because you're going to want to both have a chance to speak to the camera and to show your surroundings while you're filming. Uh, you may have noticed the change in video quality as I switch to the Canon G7X Mark II. You can see just how crispy that camera is. It will show your face almost with too much detail. It will kind of scare you at first. Uh, but make no mistake, this is a great, powerful little tool uh, that I'm a big fan of. But I will stop rambling and I will get to the point here by showing you my famous 12 point test. I just started recording and uh, my focal point is on this piece of paper as I focus on it. And now I'm going up to my head, up to my face. And you'll see there is a bit of a delay. There's a bit of a delay on the autofocus, but it's not too bad. Um, the only time I notice a big delay on the autofocus, like say three or four seconds, is when you are walking and filming and maybe you're focused on something far away and then suddenly you turn the camera around and you try to go straight to your face. Uh, it, it takes some time. It takes a few seconds because the camera doesn't really know where you are yet. But of course, you can actually touch touch the screen, not 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 the lens, which is what I'm pointing at right now. But touch the touch screen and touch on your face, which allows you to actually choose the focal point. Of course, I already talked a bit about holding the camera in my intro, but it bears repeating that this really is a useful tool. Uh, not just for how portable it is, but for that screen which allows you to get some footage, get some photos, make some video, and then flip it around. Uh, and it's, you know, unlike some bigger cameras, this one is really easy to go from this position to this position, this position to this position. Uh, or even just to walk around, you know, holding it like that and vlogging like that it's inconspicuous like you won't get as much attention as a big DLSR or professional camera um, setup but at the same time you will get great quality from this little camera and that's what I really like about it that's what I think a lot of vloggers like about it um, I should also mention that I like to use it with uh, a little flexible tripod. This allows you to get a bit more distance between you and the camera. It gets a nice natural shot. Um, get a bit of your surroundings too so it's not just your face all the time, right? And it just gives you the portability to, you know, film things as they're happening. You can of course use this to accomplish that. Um, you can get slight movement on a steady base. For time lapses especially, and I'll talk about time lapses a bit later in the video, 
But for time lapses especially, I love to just have this set on a three second interval or a five second interval. And this thing here, I mean, it can, you know, it's not, it's not bulletproof, but it can definitely stand up to a bit of, uh, a bit of wind, uh, a bit of the elements. Um, and you know, this is dirt cheap, so highly recommend um, pairing your G7X with a flexible tripod. Now, I know that while I focus on vlogging, a lot of you will have very different uses for this camera, and a lot of you might just be recording things indoors, so for you, the indoor audio test could really be the most important part of this camera. So I want to respect that and make a test that can apply to everyone. So here is my indoor audio test. And for a second here, I'm going to move nice and close. Uh, sorry, I don't mean to freak you guys out. I'm just trying to give you a good idea of what it sounds like when I am really close. So I'm going to set this up nice. Wouldn't that be ironic if I drop my camera just after talking about how good that tripod is? But uh, as you can hear, this is me speaking indoors. I'm now a bit further away. I've raised my voice, but only slightly. So this is still me speaking uh, quite normally. And while I can't see what this footage will look like until afterwards, uh, I'm fairly confident about the audio capabilities on this camera, as I have used it before quite a bit. And I know that, to be honest, the only, the only issue with the audio you have to have is one little thing, make sure your finger or thumb is not covering the audio uh, input because the speaker is actually just on top and sometimes if you're vlogging and you're just holding it, you can accidentally cover it. It's kind of a rookie mistake that I made a few times, you might make as well if you're not super careful about stuff like that. As I turn you to look outside, you can probably see that it is a gloomy gray day in Vancouver. So unfortunately, I don't think I can give you the sunshine, uh, sunshine test on this one. The rain is coming down outside, and as I show you that, I can get a chance to show up the zoom. But I'm gonna wait a few minutes for that rain to subside, and hopefully I'll get a chance to go outside today and do our little outdoor tests. Uh, this is quite a nice zoom. It goes up to 17 times. And... You will notice that I don't have seamless zooming turned on. I have a little stage zoom, which means that it stutters a bit. And it stops around 4.2 times and it continues. Uh, this can be changed in your features, so you don't have to have that little stutter. You can have this nice smooth zoom all the way up to 17 times if you want. But this should give you a good example of just how far it can zoom and just how clear the visual maintains. Uh, even all the way up, up here, you know? Can you guys believe that? Can you guys believe this is the same sky I was showing you an hour ago? I'm not making this up, an hour ago it was raining outside. So this is gonna be our lucky day. And I'm gonna give you guys a quick little sunshine test just by moving my chair. So this is what I look like in the sunshine. As you can probably tell, I mean, you know, it, it, it takes a moment to, a moment to, a moment to adjust to the, uh, the whiteness of uh, the sunshine, the brightness of the sunshine. But overall, you can definitely use this camera and you can definitely get a good shot, even in the sun. I can't believe it's, uh, I can't believe it's October in Vancouver and I don't need a raincoat. And I get to make a great video for you fine folks at home. I'm loving life. Now that we've moved outside, I'm gonna give you guys a quick little uh, audio test standing beside traffic. So that'll give you a nice idea what it's like when you are filming somewhere with noticeable background noise. So guys, here I am, here I am speaking. As you can probably tell, I'm raising my voice and this should give you a good idea of what it's like. Those cars look close to me, damn. It's not as dangerous as it looks, but uh, this gives you a good idea of what it's like when I'm speaking next to something loud like traffic. So guys, 
the reason I have screen visibility on uh, my 12 point test is that when I when I was recording with my other camera the uh, Canon Vixia camcorder when I was standing in the Sun you just couldn't see the screen you couldn't see what you were doing the, the land the glare on the screen was too much but with this camera uh, the glare is almost non-existent so I, I never really have a problem seeing what I'm doing in the screen so I have to give like I have no complaints with the LCD touchscreen on the uh, G7X Mark II uh, yeah no complaints Alright guys, so it's not a weekend, so it's not that busy out, but as one final test, I want to give you guys an example of what it looks like and sounds like to be using this camera outside when there's a crowd of people around. Um, hopefully that turns out to be useful for you guys. Uh, I don't usually film in public, so it's always a bit weird doing this, especially with the big tripod. Because I got to walk around with this thing and people are always like, what's that? Why are you filming me? Anyway, that is a quick look at how this camera does when you are on the streets outside. Hope that's been useful. Oh yeah, I should also mention that this camera is quite good as a point and shoot camera. Especially at night, this thing really gets some great shots. There's actually a lot of people up here, so this could be a good chance to give you a little time lapse. I'm also going to include some time lapses from Vietnam that I shot a couple months ago uh, that turned out really cool. Uh, but yeah, I'll just give you a really quick one here, shooting at uh, one frame every three seconds. There's no better pocket sized camera for a time lapse than the G7X Mark II. Hmm, subliminal messaging. Okay, and watch this. See, it's quite quick, isn't it? It can focus on the writing very quickly. And then back to the water bottle and the table and the golf clubs. Guys, I spoke about depth of field a bit before. Uh, so this is gonna be a short little test, but here I am on my desk. I have my water bottle I have my golf clubs for sale hundred bucks. Anyone want them? Okay, forget about that But I have my golf clubs. I have my pencil which just happens to be on the table Maybe I can use that too, but let's find out these two are the main players in this game yeah, It might be a bit tricky because they're so close together, but I'm gonna zoom in a bit more and make it easier to see look at that this is kind of a cool situation here. We've got the pencil, we've got the golf clubs in focus, um, and it shows you just how powerful that depth of field is. Here, I'm gonna to touch on the water bottle. An instant, there's very little delay. You immediately see the change. And these items are quite close together too. And these items are quite close together too. So it is impressive, the depth of field on this camera, that is for sure. Now I'm gonna to touch on the pencil. Maybe this will give you the whole table, let's see. Yeah, the pencil kind of gives you the whole table. But you can see that is one crispy looking pencil and suddenly the water bottle and the uh, golf clubs are out of focus. So yeah, that is the little uh, depth of field test. Hope you enjoyed that. I'm gonna join you guys a bit later. If it's not raining in Vancouver, I will go out and give you a night test uh, tonight. Or if it is, uh, I'll have to look through footage and find you some nice night footage that I've shot before. Um, but you know what, I have some nice footage from Vietnam. Maybe I'll share that with you. But uh, I should take this chance to say again that I'm Dan from The New Travel. I don't always do reviews, but I am doing a couple of these because they seem to be very popular these days. Uh, but normally I focus on vlogs, I focus on travel, I focus on uh, the travel mentality. If this video has been helpful, of course I'm throwing those affiliate links down below. You know how those work. Uh, if you buy something through Amazon, it sends a buck or two my way. It helps me continue to make these videos uh, without charging you anything additional. Vietnam always looks cool at night.
I go. Alright guys, I'm back again in Vancouver. Uh, that was a little taste from one of my Vietnam vlogs. If you're interested in seeing more from Vietnam, I'm gonna link you to that vlog at the end uh, of this video. I'm also gonna link you to another cool little video about my Canon G7X Mark II. Uh, this video is about the time my camera actually broke and I had to send it to repairs with Canon. Yeah, basically my camera was out of warranty and I managed to get Canon to fix it for me for free. So if you're interested in knowing how you can maybe get a camera that's out of warranty fixed for free, you can also watch that one at the end. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Now before I go, I do have one more very important note about this camera. And this requires a bit of story time.